Hello there, new pirate of the Sea of Thieves. My name is LuckyMan205, and I am a young veteran, a young pirate in the Sea of Thieves, and I have been sailing for my fair share lifetime here. As you may have heard, the cosmetics are part of the new days telling your stories and your achievements around the seas. And with the cosmetics, styles of your ships also tells your style and your personality. Or it's just some random stylish look of your ship you're looking for. How to get cosmetics? Well, that's easy, my friend. If you have seen in the ship rights, ship rights can sell you a new ship cosmetics new cannons wheels sails etc and how can you get these well simply you need to simply just pirate around you need to first take the easiest one like pick out the chests treasures take out treasures destroying skeletons and Delivering merchant cargoes. Simple as that? Yes. However, if you're looking for your favorite company, Cosmetics, if you have heard and you have seen all across the Sea of Thieves, the Order of Souls, Gold Hoarders, Merchant Alliance, Athena's Fortune, Reaper's Bones and Hunter's Call. These emissaries are part of the companies. You can sell your treasures and gain gold from them. Hunter's Call is a little bit a neutral party in the seas that is only accepting meal related to flesh. But mostly, they only accept with the great proportions of fish. The more fish you sell to the hunter's call, the more reputation you get, and also gold. Now, in today's video, we are going to take a look emissary ship sets you can actually collect in few months. Well, if you are a very active player, I have easily to say that you can always get two ship parts in one month. The downside is you have to hold the emissary flag on your ship. How to get emissary flag on your ship? Well, that's easy, my friend. You have to just go example the gold hoarders. If we want to sell gold with a high value, go to the table next to the gold hoarder sh shopmate. And then you have to accept the emissary flag on. Of course, that's not easy. In order to get the emissary flag up, you have to raise your representative value. Well, that's not the right phrase to say about a new pirate. Let's just say that your company level, in an easy term nowadays, for the new pirates, the higher you have your company level. There's a high chance for you to get cosmetics. And also, making you to reach the pirate legend statue. Status. <clears throat> now, to get the pirate legend, you have to be in three companies, level 50. And that's enough. Once you get there, you will get new cosmetics 
and also very, very expensive spends for the new ship parts, new clothing, and a new place B. Same goes with the Reaper's Bones. But for that you have to be a player versus player activity. Now, let's put these introductions aside. We have spent too much time for this. And let's deep dive into the ship cosmetics you get from emissary levels. Thankfully I managed to complete it last remaining ones, hopefully, in the last month. Now, let's take a look at first the simple one. The Gold Hoarders Emissary Ship Sets. This right here is a ship <clears throat> ship right. This right here is a Stevie. Currently we are in a Devil's Roar. Farthest part of the map and very volcanic area. And I personally like this place because the port is wide enough to walk alongside the ship close by. And right here, next to the ship right, is open ship customization set chest. <clears throat> you open ship customization chests. Let's go with the ship customization. And right over here, you have a collection of well earned ship cosmetics. Right now, let me put on Old Horror Emissaries Tribute Peak Right over here Tribute Peak Figurehead Golden Icon that shares certain similarities with Notorious Skeleton Lord A bold golden choice for a group Tribute Peak Hall Design that it is dead was once used by the Gold Hoarder ships transporting their riches to the stores of gold. Second part, <clears throat> the sales. Tribute Peak sales. Set the course for Tribute Peak with your sales of full below. There's gold to hide away. The wheel. May it guide your ship safely to an outpost where a friendly gold hoarder will be waiting for you and your plunder. Cannon. Tribute beat cannon. Sometimes even gold hoarder needs to splash out a cannonballs to defend their ship. Tribute beat capstan. Get the anchor raised and don't dwindle. Time, as they say, money. Tribute Peak Flag. This flag has fallen victim to overexcited gold hoarder and spilled pot eight. We are now currently logging at the galleon. Full set of the Tribute Peak ship set. As it points out, asking covered with gold and a very simple color choice is green. As in a galleon, you can see how the gold has been painted across the ship. Personally, I do not know how it does work in a sloop as I am sailing a sloop a lot alone but because the galleon seems to be very well recognizable feature in the game itself 
I guess the galleon holds many more details than the sloop itself. Ignore the fact that there are a lot of solo sloopers. So the sloop also, and may not also, hold some amount of details. But I have to say, for karma's sake, for my memory's sake, that these green shibbles, jewels, across the hall, they do appear across the sloop and printing. But because I chose the galleon for a really simple reason, is the sails. Because sails can also hold any amount of details. Of course, Brigantine can do the same. But because Galleon has many more sails to the Brigantine than Sloop, it's more suitable to showcase the ship sets in a Galleon. Now then, the hull itself. As the description I mentioned, the hull has been covered in gold. You can literally see it across the ship. Not bad indeed. Extremely, the bow is heavily littered with gold. And the gold hoarder himself, the leader and the creator of the gold hoarders. He got cursed by his greed of gold. He became a skeleton lord. Even the lord of the gold holders. Until he lost his sanity one. Let's take a look at the capstan. Wheel and cannons. As you can see, they are heavily related to the gold hoarder himself. Like his mouth is spilling with anger who is trying to anyone who is trying to steal his gold that his servants are going to deliver to him. Triangle symbol is a simple symbol the gold hoarder seems to have hold like an ancient coin in a forehead. Very rich looking cannons I have to say. They have been covered not just the gold, but the melted gold itself as well. Use Well, it's not bad. They can work. Also, they do not take too much of space. We take a look at the wheel. <clears throat> Excuse me, anchor. It has been also covered with the coins. Also, melted coins. And how does the capstan look like? You fully raise it. It seems it's well covered with a melted gold and a beautiful giant green obstacle. In it. <clears throat> Excuse me about bad English. Really beautiful, very beautiful details. Now let's take a look at the wheel. 
Also, the hole itself also transforms a little bit with the color. The deck. It's a little bit dark oak looking, but it's not bad. Now the wheel itself. It's heavily covered with a melted gold. Also the jewels at the top of the wheels itself and the wheel itself is also covered with the jewels. How many treasures do you have to spend to actually create a wheel like this, huh? Hmm. It can also go very high to cover the middle of the screen too. The only way to recognize that your wheel is straight in a zero point are the coins, it seems. And this sound is a uh, sound that tells that wheel is a uh, zero. Well, let's put those aside. Let's take a look at the sails. Yes. Tribute big sails. The green itself is glimmering shining in the cells. You can see how gold has been well propped in the canvas. I don't know the right word for it. Let's just say that it has been dropping in the canvas like a paint Mixed with the gold has been stuck in the canvas beautifully. Let's take a look like at the distance. Well, that really shows you that you have been playing long, Sea of Thieves, and you have been devoted yourself to the gold hoarders. And their greed towards the gold. And riches across the Sea of Thieves. And you have faced many opponents that have been trying to steal your gold. Or they may have succeeded to steal your gold. But that loss will not stop you. To gather more gold and treasures next time. Until you can finally have all the zip set. You have been devoted yourself to the gold hoarders, the gold hoarder himself. Gold is also a pirate. Uh, importance. Right way to say it. Let's just say the gold is also important for the pirates. And Tribute Peak Sipset really speaks about your hunger of gold and riches. <coughs> now that we have watched the Gold Hoarders Emissary Ship Reward. Now, let's take a look at the next one. That is a merchant alliance. Same goes with the merchant alliance. Need to raise your 
faction level high enough to buy you a merchant, <clears throat> excuse me, emissary license. Once you have blocked emissary license, you can finally raise the flag on your ship. And through that, finally collect your emissary value. And through that, you collect the zip sets that has been blocked. That grind process. Now, onwards to the Merchant Alliance. Right here, we have Merchant Ambassador zip sets. Starting with Figurehead. A figurehead of Great Golden Bird that carries the entire globe in its talons. What could this possibly symbolize? Ambassador Hall. Clean, striking paintwork that catches the eye. Rumor has it that Chief Trader Molly adapted the design from elsewhere. Next is sales. Ambassador sales. Pristine sales fashioned from exotic silk. Useful when wearing exotic silks. Merchant Ambassador Wheel. A wheel that practically screams pride, prosperity, and watch out for that rock! <clears throat> Next up is Merchant Ambassador Cannons. A cannon trimmed with so much gold, it may even be worth more than the ship you're trying to sink with. Merchant Ambassador Capstan. The spinning pegs of Capstan are like a ticking clock counting against your cargo. Ambassador Flag. Fly this flag and tell the world. You got the hold full of pigs and don't care who knows. <laughs> okay. Now here's the whole ship set in a galleon. The golden color really sticks out some way. Anchor chains painted in a ship is connecting to the anchors in a figurehead itself. Really impressive. And beautiful. Even sun is shining from the hull itself. The black, blue, a little bit yellow and white mixing together really tells you how hard you fought how, how hardly you worked to travel those carry those important cargoes across the seas now let's ignore my embarrass him describing stuff stuff and let's get take a look at the cannons I have to say cannons do look impressive and clean When you watch the back side of the cannon, you can actually see the world carved in it. Even the beautiful look of it. The cannons has been decorated to the point that you don't actually see the cannons itself. You can only see them useful once you have been those as a target to be robbed and stolen from your important cargoes and pigs.
These cannons can work, I have to say. They don't take too much screen. Next up is a capstan. Simple design. Eagle at top of it. Really marks something like importance of your mission. Like you're ready to carry the prosperities across the seas. Eagle with your side. And the eagle is watching over you as you deliver these wishful and important cargoes across the seas. It is so simple design that it's not even talked about to decorate the capstan itself. But the eagle has risen and is ready to lift off to carry its duty. I have to say the wheel is really impressive and beautiful. The decorations on it. Golden mixed. Details of the canvas. Elegance. Prosperity. And not taking too much screen of you. That's half. Well designed wheel. So simple. Yet beautiful. Really well designed, I have to say. Now what's those the sails? Good. Well, these are ambassador sales indeed. They are really fitting with the hull itself. The golden lines aside really marks the speed of the ship. Carrying its important cargoes to the next port and its customers. And pirates are the customers indeed. Making sure that the Sea of Thieves is always welcome to the new pirates, no matter what side or what your ideals are. Now let's take a look at the ship from the far. Now that is a beautiful sight to see. Really tells how much effort you have hard to carry your duty. Being proud how far you have sailed and how many seas you have across to deliver those important cargoes across the seas. Once you have collected the full ship set, hold it proudly, because the whole world will now see, and many pirates, that you have been hard working, an elegant pirate, 
to deliver goodies and protecting them and how loyal you have been to your favorite company the beautiful design itself holds so much profile how much you care about the company and your customers as well now that if you have watched the gold holders and a merchant ship sets then how about we go to my personally favorite the order of souls the order of souls also does the same thing you have to raise the faction level high enough so you can buy yourself an emissary license after that, you can finally become the emissary of your favorite company, faction, and gain zip sets and many more. Do that. Emissary value level. Now, without further ado, let's go to the Order of Souls and its zip set itself. Well, then, this zip set is called. Relic of Darkness. Starting with bigger head. A strange patchwork approximation. Patchwork approximation of an order soul's representative. The glowing eyes makes it mostly lifelike. Darkness Hall. The patterns of this hall evoke memories of certain ritualistic objects are highly prized by the Oros. Relic of Darkness Tale Madame Olivia prophesies a profitable journey for any ship adorned with this tale. Relic of Darkness Wheel. While you are watching the horizon, try not to worry that the eye on this might be watching you. Relic of Darkness Cannons. Being shrouded in swatches of the Order's signature, purple cloth makes these cannons almost period. Darkness Capstan. Mystical foresight won't help you rise the anchor. Only old fashioned brute force. Relic of Darkness Flag. Despite this flag on the horizon, it's hard not to imagine that it's stepping back. Here is the Relic of Darkness ship set at its full glory. As the description goes, the eyes do glow like it's alive. It really is detailed really well. With the dark relics themselves, you can actually find a cross. The Order of Souls missions. The color is really painted with the colors of the relics themselves. Black clothing, dark purple, and a blue. That is dark blue, really dark blue. In the mast itself, like the whole ship itself has been turned into a one giant dark relic that is going to set sail across the seas under your command and under your power. Speaking about the power, let's take a look at the cannons. The 
cannons itself seems like they have been crafted by some unknowable power. Yes, they hold the old-fashioned iron cannon inside of them. The clothing around the cannon themselves. The cannons has been crafted by some really dark magic indeed. I have no idea what the weather is mean, but the Don't worry though, if the um, base of the cannon seems like a robust, they are still well spelled to hold together, withstanding every plastic cannonballs and the pirates are going to. You can actually be a real. <clears throat> Don't worry about the eye. It's only there to make sure that every skull you have been collected under watchful eye. However, the cannon design itself seems to look. Well, uh, wide enough. It's so designed that I don't know how to say. I haven't never used these cannons because they seem like. Hmm. Clumsy is not the right word. What to say? The capstan. Simple design. As you know. Clothing and the colors of the Order of Souls and the Dark Relics has been crafted to the capstan it's And it seems like it's not just the it's not just the eye painted in the capstan's logo. But also in the pillar as well. The capstan is watching every direction, making sure that your hard work is on the watchful eye of the ship itself. That's also purple too. As in it. Well, the wheel is so thin, you cannot actually see it. That it's in your way. It's actually well crafted. A small diamond at the top of the wheel actually indicates the middle point of the wheel. The way it has been also be crafted is incredible. Simple planks atop of each other, combined to each other. Then the canvas spell to hold the thing together. And the eye looking at you. Make sure that you are also looking back. That you know that I and you are looking back each other. Like looking into darkness, seeking answers 
and the darkness is walking you you the darkness now let's put this magic mumbo jumbo aside and let's take a look at the sails Hmm. Well. I haven't seen a galleon holding these sails. You can actually see that it's not just the one sail has been used. But it has been crafted with many pieces. Every part holds some kind of magical property. And thus created the relics of darkness. Sails of darkness. Creating the sails of darkness. Every canvas and part connected each other. And this is the reason I mentioned about the tea tails in a galleon is so much more than a brigantine and sloop. Now, really fascinating sails. Let's take a look from afar. There is nothing to say. You have devoted yourself to this uncover the secrets of darkness. Once you sail with these ships set, proud and skillful plates and guns, you have vanquished many skeletons, ships and beasts and other pirates alike. Do not protect just the ship itself and the darknesses it holds, but also the skulls of your fallen enemies, because all the secrets the skulls hold are under your watch until you reach the order of souls happen. And from there, you can finally get the answer. What kind of recipes did your enemies hell? What is the tastiest sandwich your enemies called? And when was the last time you paid your taxes of the enemy, of course? Now that we have witnessed gold holders, merchants, our souls, emissary, ship, rewards. Now it's time for the faction that focuses on player versus player activities. That is, has been turned into PVE faction, player versus enemy. The Reaper's Bones. Because that thing also holds. A emissary rewards to the ship. Ow. Let's take a look at the ship set itself. It actually give us once you have completed the ship itself you the Reaper Bones give you and your loyalty the flame. We have finally arrived. Last Renegade Sip Set. Sorry, with Figurehead. A figurehead depicting the mysterious masked train stranger whose efforts led to Jason Paper's hideout. That is Wanda's sister Wanda or other way around. Just he was also called the Warsmith. He became deaf. 
follower of Captain Flameheart, who has now taken control of the Reaper's bones. Thanks to the Servant of the Flame being on the wheel. Renegade Hall. Dowed with Reaper and Skeleton runes, this intimidating hall is practically cheerful by the Reaper's standards. Renegade Sails. These bold sails make it abundantly clear who it is that other crews are about to deal with. Renegade Wheel. No matter how hard you spin the wheel, nothing can change the flow of sand through the Reaper's Hall class. Renegade Cannon. Who unto any emissary ship that ends up staring down the business ends of these cruel cannons? So cruel that the image is also pixel itself. Asked Renegade Capstan. Reapers often prefer to keep their anchor raised, leaving the capstan disused and dust. Renegade Flag A few scholars, as well as many skeletons, know the meaning of symbols like the one on this flag. That is. And here we have a renegade ship set in its glory. As it seems like and it looks like, it is heavily decorated with the Reaper standards. Thank you so much. Mask Vigorhead, also the Warsmith, also known as the Wandas? Wandas? Big Sister? Affected by the Flameheart's curse. In a figurehead. You can see what is behind the mask. And that is the skeleton himself. You can see how the flame is captured inside the arrow class, making it infinite anomal time. You can see how the plaque has been covered the whole. Only gold paint separating the details. And there is a small amount of red. You can actually see in these small cannon <clears throat> doors. I don't know, does this red also appear in the sloop or the brigantine? But I have to say that red really puts out more details in the Now that we have witnessed the hall itself, it's so simple but the bow really holds so much flaming magic. Now let's take a look at the cannons. Well, the cannons are like they have been covered by a breeze roots, holding symbols that only reapers and the skeletons know. Flameheart being a skeleton lord himself, he knows what these symbols mean. Same goes with the... His son, Servant of the Flame, also goes with the Wanda the Warsmith. Was it... The flaming color in the cannons really close really well. 
I don't know how these cannons were made, but it seems like these cannons were oldly made because they have been changed some degree. Roots has been covering. They have been covered around with pandas, keeping the whole structure in place. As well as the using of the cannons. They are extremely clumsy. The design might be impressive, but the usefulness of this cannon is so obnoxious. You have no idea how high or how low you are aiming. You need to actually fire some few shots to actually learn how to aim with these clumsy big boys. Now with the capstan. I don't know what it has been designed, but it seems like the capstan has been completely turned from one chunk of the world tree roots. It has been turned into a capstan itself. Only the golden blade in the middle can actually separate it from its original design. And as we raise the R class of blade. actually see that piracy with a burning fashion in our class is eternal and never ends. Like never ending piracy. Now that we elf the wheel also has been designed from the original design and turned it into Reaper's bones. The roots have been taken, it's placed to the wheel structure. Covering it and becoming one. The flame in the wheel itself also magic. If you turn the wheel just a slightly, the flame always points forward, upwards. Making it impossible to lose where is the middle. Flame always goes up like a passion. Now, with the propaganda, let's talk with the sails. There no need to hide the true entity. You may hold the mask. But you can actually see how well you have been doing it to be a one of the skeletons. Reaper's bones. Now, let's take a look at the far.
if you are a normal sloop or ship. And you see these that coming towards you. Closer and closer until it's too late. Knowing that you have been choose to be their next target of their piracy. With the flaming colors in the darkness, you can actually see the glowing passion of piracy and your loyalty, not just the Reaper's bones, but also the King Wannabe, Captain Flameheart himself, and also the pirate who seeks not just to destroy the current Zealotes, but to create an empire where only strong and conflict exist. And these sets, this ship set, is a passionate and well pointing sign that you have devoted yourself, Reaper's Bones, true and true. Well, if you have noticed, we have been talking about so much this far. A faction that has been very active, any way, shape or form. Now, what about the faction that does not care about the emissary flag? It only cares about the value of the fish. And every meal you have been cooking, killing, Captured or give it the iron salt to make it a tasteful meal. Now, a neutral party that has been heavily connected to the rebuilding the Golden Sands. The Hunter's Call. Neutral faction, and also the faction that has no emissary flag value whatsoever, because they only care fish. Let's start fishing to the ship set. This ship design is very simple and very clean. If you have to say so myself. The killer whale tip set, starting with figurehead, based on the swordfish that adorned the killer whale before Merrick misplaced the ship. The killer whale hole. This paint scheme made the killer whale crew feel like they had bigger boat. Killer whale sails. The killer whale bore the sea monster sails, a move commonly known as tempting fate. Killer whale wheel. Last ship to use this beautiful sea themed wheel was very nimble. Right till the end. Killerware cannons. Perfect cannons for taking down sea monsters. They're raring to get some revenge. Killerware capstan. Based on the capstan that went down with the killer whale, let's hope this one is luckier. Killerware flag. A flock adorned with waves. Creating a peaceful nautical image until the storm hits. And here is the hardest ship set to get across the Sea of Thieves. 
if you want to be a neutral and you want to be not too focused on the uh, hazards and complicated actions across the seas Hunter's call is for you If you reach the level 50 the maximum level of the Hunter's call you get not just some tip sets but also killer whale trinkets as well The beautiful green symbolizes peaceful mind with a blue tape showing that no sea level will disrupt your fishing and how to fish let's take a look at the cannons These cannons has really big fame. They are so simple, so clean. These cannons may have killed many monsters this far, but they have also earned reputation being the cleanest cannons to use in player versus player activities. So simple design. Taking so little space. Let me pulse over here just a quick. So simple design and clean. Really fish team. And you can basically see how the uh, frog trying to get in my mouth is how the fish logo has been crafted into the cannons, creating more details, making it more beautiful in design. Even the capstan is beautifully crafted. The details with the fish across it is something you must adore really much. Even the mysterious monster's head at the top of the pillar is well crafted. It seems like it has been given the diamonds as well. What's over the ship and your fishing journey? To be honest, I haven't never... I have seen many anchors and these are the beautiful ones indeed. The pillar is clean. But the details this anchor holds... Something... You have to be proud of. The wheel itself is simple and clean. You have to be proud once you have your hands on the wheel. There is no cleaner and beautiful wheel he across the Thieves. But that's just my personal opinion about this. Let's call this a killer way design. I do have to point out that fish head at top of the wheel is unnecessary, uh, oddly put in the end. But it is a simple marking that you are after 
every sea creature across the seas. And how you can catch up the sea creatures, let's look the sails. They are simply green, simply clean, holding the logo defining fate. The hunters call simple. Well then, let's look at a four. When you see a hunters call ship set. Killer whale sailing across the seas. This is so rare to see across the seas that only oldest veterans knows the story of the killer whale and its fate. Now that you are a new pirate, the killer whale sipset is the hardest sipset to get. Since they have no emissary flag, you have to take your own pace. The hunters call. But once you have reached the level 50 in the hunters call's way, you have marked yourself the master of the hunters. And the master of the seas, knowing that it's not just the fish you know across the seas, but also the direction of the waves and the ways of the seas. Once you have this entire ship set, you can proudly sail these across the seas, telling the story that you have lost your sanity, you have gained your sanity, you have sacrificed so many baits, you have burned so many fishes on the oven, and also you have been Facing many aggressive pirates who have been trying to steal your fishes for them to eat. Congratulations! You are the master hunter of the waves. Well then. We are now reaching the final faction on the sea. <coughs> and that is the faction you are aiming to be. Well, you can actually take that as a secondary objective if you want. Becoming a pirate legend is a choice. And it must be a choice you have to take a sh long time. To be a true legend, you need to conquer your skills, your an understanding of the waves, and your sharp wit to be a pop some way that marks you as a legend. Well, that, uh, that was a really oddly but good way to put. Let's just say that take your time to become the greatest legend. And to, to be a great legend, learn to be a great pirate to reach level 50. In the factions, and from those factions, you will be the skillful legend 
across the seas. Now let the introductions be aside and let's focus on the last faction, Athena's Fortune. Let's watch the zip sets of Magpie's Glory. He is dead, plain born by this figurehead, was taken straight from the well of fate. Magpie's Glory Hall. Brilliant white and glittering gold. Practically guaranteed to dazzle all who spy you. Magpie's Glory Sales. The Pirate Lord himself specified the unusual, twirling design on these sails, but refused to be drawn upon its meaning. Magpie's Glory Wheel. An immaculate golden wheel, sadly destined to be covered by grubby pirate fingerprints. Magpie's Glory Cannons. A stash of Athena's fortune fireworks launched from these cannons is a great way to honor the Pirate Lord. Magpie's Glory Capstan The capstan of ludicrously opulent ship once commissioned by the Pirate Lord. Magpie's Glory Flag The perils of life at sea can take their toll on even the most magnificent flag. And here is the Magpie's glory in its fullest. You can see how the light in the lantern is shining. I have no idea does it actually shine brightly in the dark. And you actually see the clean paint white that is really rare across the seas. The white color is actually the rarest color across the seas. With the golden lines across this really rises the great design of the galleon itself. And how to protect your great fortunes. Let's take a look at the cannons. One might say that these cannons are stupidly long. The nozzles atop of the cannons may confuse you a little bit. Because how much extra length they add. However, here is a joke. That's not true. It's just a visual line. The range of the cannons is not changing at all. How long barrel you have. It's just a visual effect of the cannon itself that is lying to you. How far you are aiming. As you can see also how clean they are. The thrilling design. It's really fascinating that even I don't know why the map goes in this way. But this is the same set that you can also find the ghost ship design itself. 
You could also argue that the Magpie's glory is the original design of the ghost set itself. The ghost ship has been first. Raise it the capstan. You can see how the golden pillar is rising. Indicating that you are ready to raise your fortune to the highest peak you can ever get it. The details of the anchor is simple. But then again they are really glorious looking indeed. Beautiful white and gold mixed together. Let's take a look at the wheel. I personally never understood what these broken wooden planks are. Or next to the wheel. But if they are for visual effect. Then that's okay. Go with that. And the wheel is so little that you can actually enjoy how much space is giving you to visually see. Well, let's just say my phrasing was so stupid enough to make you so dizzy. Let's just say that the size is small enough. That it's not bothering you to see what's behind the wheel. The design is golden and beautiful and clean. Now let's look at the glorious fortune sales. They may look like they have seen better days. However, a beautiful design. It's simple, clean, almost clean. You can actually see some golden colors in it. The ghostly design is there. The pure white almost. Now, let's take a look at the distance. Once you see the ship painted with white and sailing under the gold and fortune it is a great indicator that the pirates who sails in this ship have pledged themselves to be a legends across the seas and they are aiming to collect the fortunes and protecting the pirate's life. Collecting prosperities from Athena's fortune treasures. Welcoming new pirates. Also fighting with the old ones and new ones. And their only glory is every adventure they take and making memories with your crews and you can actually enjoy your fortune when you sail with Athena's fortune.
There is no need to explain. The beautiful design of white and gold indicates that you have pledged yourself to the Athena's fortune and the glorious victories it will give you and prosperities and treasures and to the pirate lord himself that has that food and becoming a legend across a legend among the pirates well well we have finally managed to take a look at every ship set that the emissary values can actually give you what was your favorite ship set what faction do you aim to be your main one? And what is your secondary factions? What is a ship set you want to gain the first? And what do you love about the Sea of Thieves? Not just by cosmetics, but also the game itself that it actually gives you. Every cosmetic you gain actually tells the story you have gained in the game itself oh yes the way I have created myself in this game actually tells about how I wanted to represent myself of course there are also seems some clever indicators that the golden muck I have is like a my well earn value on the Athena's fortune how oh, the red claws indicates how many skeleton ships I have burned with the Aston Lord how oh, the uh, Ashen colors in my hair and mustache has been indicated that how much time I have spent it in the devil's roar and making myself a home there and the ghostly belt indicates that I have been part of the uh, Fortune Guardians. Guardians of Fortunes. Player versus player. And the shirt indicates just the uh, how many skeletons I have vanquished in my career. Well. Thank you so much for watching, we have now come to the end of the video. Now I'm gonna raise my croc to you, welcoming you to the Sea of Thieves. And I wish you the most glorious wins and fortunes across the sunsets. Take care shipmates! If you like this video, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and leave the comments down below. What is your favorite thing about the CFDs and the zip sets? <laughs> My name is Lucky Man 205. Lucky me is 205. And I'm off to the next waves. And I see you in the next one. And I have wish you. Glorious winds and fortunes.